Hi guys, welcome back to Jean's Gems. I'm here to share with you a tutorial for some faux washi tape. Now, um, a lot of videos that I've been watching lately have been talking about faux washi tape and you know that I have made some myself out of fabric. Um, some feed sacks and some other fabric that I had. So there's really lots of different kinds of washi tape that you can make and um, styles and textures. Um, and I kind of have, being a mixed media artist for the majority of my, um, the time that I've done art, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with real washi tape because to me, washi tape has more of a plastic feel to it. And so when I'm using it in my mixed media projects for collage or something like that, to me, it's, it's hard to gesso over. It's hard to get that to look like a piece of paper and muted. So I started thinking about some ways that I could make my own personal washi tape. Now, when I showed you my Timu haul, I had gotten several rolls of this. I looked up online in their catalog for carpet tape. So I got this carpet tape and I think it was only 79 cents or 97 cents. I can't remember, but at any rate, it was relatively inexpensive. So I ended up getting several rolls of it and I'm glad I did because there's not very much on this roll. So for the piece that I have, um, it's that I put out on my sheet, is probably about, I would say, probably about 18 inches. No, not 18, 15 inches. So um, now you lose some of it, some of the space because I have taped it down here with the washi tape. This is very sticky. So you do have to find a way to anchor it when you're actually making your design. And what I'm going to use today, um, would be some napkins. I got a few packages of napkins from Timu. And of course, the one that I just had here that I wanted to show you has now walked away. Guys, I haven't been feeling very good as of late, so please excuse me if I sound like I'm a little off today. Let me just use um, this one because this one is beautiful too. The other one I had was more of a plain design, but it had butterflies on it and I wanted to use those. So I'm sure I'll find it here in a second, but let me go ahead and show you this napkin. It has some fall like roses on it because they're brown. Now I did notice with the Timu napkins that they were only two ply, which is fine with me. I have, ooh, see this is what you, you don't want to do. Although it helps me get the back off of it. <laughs> oh guys, it has been a rough few days for me, so. We will just start with that piece and not worry about this little boo-boo. But you can see in your craft room, all kinds of things happen <laughs> that you don't really plan on happening. So you just have to make do and keep going with it and everything will turn out fine. I had talked to you about um, 
the gloom and um, water mixture that I made. And I used just, you can use, if you wanna buy a huge bottle, um, you can buy the M Elmer's glue or you can buy the PVA glue that you can get it. I, they may even sell it at the hardware stores. I'm not sure, but, um, I just got two big bottles of the school glue or the PVA glue. I did get the white glue, not the clear, and I just mixed it with some water and I mixed it until it got to a consistency um, that would allow for um, things to stiffen or things to harden. Not super hard, but enough that you can um, work with it. So I'm going to start with this piece and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down um, the napkin okay and I'm just this is very sticky tape as you already saw our little boo-boo there let me go ahead and move this one up a little bit that way it won't get on the the one that we're working with so we're going to smooth this on now this is the sticky side up so let me go ahead and tear another piece and we will apply that just right here to the last piece here. Now, <clears throat> if you can see, you're going right over the edge because what you'll do then after you do your layering is you can um, just trim it once it's dry. And this mixture does dry pretty quickly. And I'm just gonna go over this a little bit because I want it to have a nice sealed texture. And also I'm gonna layer some other um, napkin on top of it. So I get something that's a little thicker. Now, even though these napkins were um, two ply, they still ha show a real nice opaqueness to them. So I was pleased with that. And then what I would do after you get your base layer is I would just tear out some of the pieces that you like. Like here's just this rose. So you can put that on there. And then I do have a piece from another napkin that I was working on earlier today that has some pinks and blues in it so we can tear this off and I think um, something that would be really nice as well is if you had um, any plain colored napkins I'm going to show you what I do with the inside piece I don't throw that away I save it but if you have um, any um, solid color napkins, we'll talk about how we can use those as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and layer some of this over and paint it on. And um, these napkins do have a little white border so I'm going to do my best not to get that border on here because I don't want it to look placed I want it to look as organic as it can or abstract as it can so here's a cute little image of the Eiffel Tower so we'll stick that on there and you can put these in any direction that you want to. Now, when you when your washi tape is finished and you're ready to use it on your project, maybe you want to make this be a focal point so then you can do that vertically instead of um, horizontally like I have it right now. So, my plastic is not staying where I want it to stay. 
So I've looked at a lot of videos. This is not an original idea. Um, I don't know the name of the artist that had um, done this, but um, I thought it was really clever because um, you can save, I don't have a huge napkin collection, but you could save napkins from all over the place, wherever you go, that you can get them if they have words on them or numbers or, you know, cocktail napkins, anything that you like. I'm going to use some of this floral image right here. So you can see this has a nice little bit of purple in it. And I'm just going to lay that. I think I'm going to tear it a little bit smaller so I can use more of it. And then just lay it over. And then cover it with your mixture. Now, you can see pretty much um, the tape coming through the background. So you should not have any issue, stars and garters, you should not have any issue whatsoever of um, being able to see where to cut the tape out or um, where you should be layering the particular image that you want. So here, I'm going to put a little bit more of this down here because I want it to be thicker. Let me see, make sure I don't get that white border. <clears throat> so you just go along and you have this fun little time. Um, fun little time layering on your napkins and creating different patterns and different colors. And this glue <clears throat> will dry pretty quickly. So if you decide that <clears throat> you want to use it, excuse my cough, for a particular project and you want to make a certain color scheme, you know, you can do that and it doesn't take that much for it to dry in order for you to use it in one of your projects. So here is, I'm going to use a little bit of this house image to make sure this is down good. Now this is all going to stick fine. There's not going to be any issue with the tape itself once it's all um, all glued down. And then of course the other side of the tape is double-sided. So we will be able to we will be able to then use the double-sided part for um, actually sticking it down then once it's all finished. So I think I like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up off the paper. Now, there's one thing you may want to um, keep in mind is if you have any, um, non-stick paper that you can use underneath the washi tape when you're applying the um, glue mixture. You may want to use that because it's easier to lift off. Um, and then, of course, any of these edges that I've gone over won't stick. So um, we're going to let this dry. And um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the, um, the white part of the, um, the inside layer. So 
Here I have again, this is about um, a 15 inch piece. And I'm going to take the white, I'm just going to tear it in strips and I'm gonna lay it down. Okay, now you, if you, if you get little wrinkles or um, folds in this, I that doesn't bother me at all. That just gives it more texture and I'm all about um, texture in my projects. I like the tactical or, or feeling of these, um, of these different projects that we do. Um, I think that um, the texture really helps the person who reads it or goes through it, you know, even just feel the art in addition to looking at it. I used to be a person when I would make my ATCs or I would make uh, um, some type of card or journal I wasn't really big on sealing my pieces because I wanted to have that feeling of the different textures in my work so and you if you're if you've tried any type of texture paste or um, with your stencils or anything that makes, even gesso makes an interesting texture on some of your pieces. So it's all in whatever you feel is your preference, but it's a great thing about art, um, any kind of art whether it's just um, coloring or drawing or painting, whatever you do, um, the feeling that you give other people is, you know, that's what makes the art worthwhile to me. So I wanted to ask you guys about something. My daughter um, asked me to get her some FEMO slices. And I was like, what in the world are FEMO slices? So um, I knew FEMO was a brand of um, clay. And I had um, looked on Timu, good old Timu, comes through again. And I found some um, slices for her, which she was really excited about. And she used them for, um, making a name tag for work. And, um, she has made some shaker cards and she's put the little FEMO slices. And now that they've become more popular, um, they come in different, um, designs. So initially when Adriana and I started looking for FEMO slices, we the original thing was all the fruits. So here's here are the fruits that I got and then I got some for her. And then um recently at one, at Hobby Lobby they had some on sale and I picked up a couple um, bottles, but I don't really know what to do with these because I haven't ventured into resin yet, but they're just little tiny pieces of um, clay that they have made canes out of different layers and then they slice them really, really tiny. So you can see here, these are like little tiny butterflies and here's a little mushroom. And I think I have rainbows 
and smiley faces and of course the fruit ones I showed you. But I got to thinking when I was making this washi tape um, that you can make your faux washi tape um, three-dimensional if you want to. So you could, uh, if you are working on a project that's like a glitzy glam type deal and you want a strip of something that is glitter, you could definitely, with this glue mixture, put um, the glue down first and then just do a sprinkle of glitter. I don't know if I have any right at my hands. I don't think I have any glitter glitter. I have um, some glitter that has shapes like stars and, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. I still haven't gotten my new craft space organized. But um, what I would do is I would just take that glitter and put it over top of this after I saturated it good with glue and then um, let it dry. And of course, some of it is going to fall off probably. Um, so I would probably either go over it a second time or just shake off the ac excess and use um, what's there. Now, the glitter I probably would not use on a white one or a plain colored napkin one, but the idea of this process of using the plain side of the napkin is that after this is dry, we're going to be able to do things like um, adding glitter, we can um, stamp on this, we can um, draw, we can stencil, paint, whatever we wanna do on top of this, it's gonna give us a nice sheer a dried finish that we can create something nice on the top layer. So instead of pitching that inside white piece, we're going to use it to make ourselves a blank canvas, so to speak, so we can make ourselves an individualized piece of washi tape. Okay, now, um, this one, I have finished layering it as much as I want. So I'm going to lift this off. And see, this is what happens if you don't use a self-stick or a sticky side, um, a sticky background. Some of the outside layers will stick on there, which is not a big deal for, for this because... Um, you can just take it off and it, it it's not, you know, not a problem. But if you have um, a really, a couple things you can use that I think that would work well for a background so it, the, the over layers don't stick would be um, wax paper. You can use parchment paper that you use for baking. You can also use um, freezer paper. The back side of freezer paper is also um, non-stick. So that's, I don't know, I call it freezer paper. You might call it butcher paper, but that um, works well for it not to stick to the background. So let me show you a piece that I already made and I made this one a little bit earlier today so it's already dried and as you can see with the um, flowers it came out really nice so you get not only this unique piece of faux washi 
but you also get the, this great texture on it because of the glue. And I think that if you are doing, like I said, a specific journal, or if you're doing um, some collaging, this type of washi tape is going to feel more like paper and not have that um, plastic-like coating on the top because the glue mixture, and if you get matte medium, instead of using the glue mixture, do not get the glossy because if you do, you're going to have a gloss on it. Now, if you want glossy, that's fine. But um, my reason for doing this is because I want to get a faux washi tape that looks more like a fabric or a paper so that it will blend in better when I am doing some collaging on my pages. So here is the one that I did with um, the napkin, one of the napkins I have. And I am just in love with the color. Now, a lot of us use um, Tim Holtz ink. So I, th now you, ha you would have to be cautious of doing this because Tim Holtz ink um, is water-based and it doesn't always, um, doesn't all, it, it'll come off onto your hands. But I thought what would be really interesting to add some definition to this is to take one of your brushes or a sponge or whatever you have, okay, load it up and just go around the edges just a little bit. Now with this brush, it does put a little bit more on than what I like, but if you want to age it, wow, this does a really nice idea. I think I have a little finger one here. Let me try this one. So you can just go around the edges and I think what that does is it makes a definition to the design. I want more than that on there though. My Some of my ink pads have seen their better days, so I need to re-ink them. There you go. You can see how inking that on the edge just really brings out the design. I love it. I'm just so in love with it. I'm not real super precise with my um, my inking um, because the colors of this um, napkin, you know, it looks good, I think, with a little bit of ink on the edges. And even if it runs over into the design, it kind of makes it look aged. So there we go. We've inked that up a little bit, and I think that looks really nice. And I just used um, tea dye. I think if you would, you could possibly use the the vintage photo if you wanted to, but I think it would make a a much um, darker outside. And I like just the subtleness of it looking vintage. So what I'm gonna do is I have, um, what did I want? Oh, I have these cute little paper bags and I wanted to fix them up so that I could put them in a journal. But I'm gonna use this as an example. I'm gonna cut a piece of this washi tape. Let's see. Where are my better scissors? I'm gonna cut it like right here. Okay. 
And here we have a piece of our faux washi tape. And this one has, I'm gonna cut this um, other piece off that I had on it. And then I'm just gonna peel it off. It peels off really easy. And as you can see, the reason why they call it the carpet tape is because it has those fibers on the back. But then I'm going to just lay it down on the top of this bag. Okay, just like this. For this purpose, okay, I think I'm going to trim it rather than fold it in. And cut it here. And I think that looks just so beautiful. So if you need to um, ink it anymore, you can, but it just looks so cute on the edge of that. And the texture is just beautiful. So there is an example of how you can use your washi tape when you're done and it does come out a little bit, um, not exactly transparent, but I'm thinking more of like a vellum -y look maybe once you put it down, which I think is what some washi tape does anyway. So I think we got the great effect that we wanted to with um, the carpet tape and the napkin. So that is an example of the one that we made with the napkins. I also made one um, that I already have done with the white, okay? Now, I will tell you, the white, I don't know if it's just because it's white or what, what the situation is with it, but it's a little bit more textured than the other, which for me, I really love that. If you're going to do some stamping, I'm gonna see if I can find, I would recommend using um, Stays On Ink for stamping. I'm not sure what color this one is, but we'll just give it a go. Looks like it might be purple with the wrong lid. <laughs> That's my life, purple with the wrong lid. So I'm gonna take this rose stamp and see if I can get some of this ink on it. And then I'm going to ink this and see what design we can come up with. Now, this may not have been the best stamp to choose, but I think it's a really cool um, effect when you do stamp. And stamping them in different directions seems to work nice. I like that. You can stamp over. And I think, actually, I really like how this is turning out. I think that what I will do, now you can't exactly see on some of these uh, places that we stamped that we're actually stamping a rose. But I think what would be really cool is to take um, either an acrylic pen marker or um, acrylic paint and add some gold or silver on this. Let me see what I have. Actually, what I'm gonna use, just to give you the general effect, these were some little stamps that I got from um, Timu. 
Tanya's, their Pearl Ultimate. Now, I they're okay. They're very small, so they don't hold that much ink. But as far as um, the quality of the ink, I think it's really nice. So even if we take some of this gold and put in here in different places, it adds a really nice effect. Now, um, what I would do probably in the future, instead of using that big stamp, I might use a smaller stamp that has a little bit more detail to it so that I can get some sharper images. But this is um, really pretty with the gold in it, I think. And with the stays on ink, it's not going to come off. As you can see, it's not blending in with the gold. So this is an interesting piece. I think it came out nice. But in the future, um, I'm going to try some smaller stamps. It's just a stamp I had available right now. I wanted to see what that would look like. You could also, I mean, if you were more precise about how you placed the rose stamp, you could certainly go in around some of these areas here and actually um, paint in different colors. I think that would be pretty too. So here um, is the white paper faux washi tape. And what we used here was um, a purple stays on ink with a rose stamp. Here's the stamp. So as you can see, it doesn't have a whole lot of detail in it. And then we use some of this Pearl Ultimate ink to kind of ink it up. So it gave it a little bit more definition. So that looks really nice. I'm going to cut off a piece right here. Let me lay this down. And I want to cut this edge a little bit straighter. And then I am just going to, just using this paper bag as an example, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here. There you go. And there you can see the two types of faux washi tape that we made today. So there are a lot of techniques you can try. The napkin, I think, is a fabulous idea. And using the white part to make yourself a blank canvas to make your own special um, washi tape is also an excellent idea. So please let me know if you give these a try. And like I said, the carpet tape that I got on Timu was very inexpensive. And um, I just picked up a couple rolls, which I'm glad I did. When I started unpacking and found out I'd bought like four rolls, I was like, oh goodness, what am I going to do with all these? But now um, with this project, I think the sky's the limit with it, especially using um, a plain colored napkin and then creating your own background. Um, so even with this, we could... Um, find some little uh, butterfly stickers or bees or whatever you liked and kind of just add them um, throughout the piece. Here is the napkin I wanted to show you earlier. If you look at this um, butterfly, you could certainly cut this out and then position it in different places on top of your um, your uh, design faux washi tape. So this, I think, was a really fun project. 
I really love this idea. And to those who have come before me and gave me the um, heads up on how to do this, and I thank you. And I, I want to um, know if you all try the FEMO slices or know what's good to use for that besides resin. And let me know if you've made your own faux washi tape and how you feel about um, being able to design your own washi tape for a particular project that you're working on. So thank you so much for spending some time with me. And I really um, want to thank everyone that subscribed to my channel and has put up with my ums and ahs. I'm trying to get better as the time goes on. I love you all. Please stay safe and art on.